right, all right. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I said, good morning, brothers and sisters. How you doing this morning? Hope you're doing well. And uh, again, Nick, I I'm grateful that you have come. Come on, brother. Me and you are going to get along just fine. And uh, my name is Marcel Hall. And uh, I had the fortunate, <coughs> excuse me, privilege of uh, being able to be a minister here and be able to speak today. And it's truly to God's glory and praise that I have the opportunity to speak today. I'm going to need some patience here today. In fact, I need your prayers for me today. As you can already see, my voice cracked a little bit there, and hopefully I can get it together. But uh, some of you know that I'm a huge San Francisco 49ers fan. And uh, if you watch the game last night, you can uh, imagine the joy that I had. And uh, however, I did not practice self-control. And so I uh, was yelling at the screen first in anger and then with much joy. However, that is not good for me, Mark. And so I had a vocal nodule many years ago, which is a benign tumor on the vocal cord. Actually, Adele had it. She had to have surgery. Frank Sinatra, a lot of people have had it before. Thankfully, I didn't have to have surgery. But as some of you know, I can re-aggravate this by not treating my voice properly or by yelling. And so last night as I was yelling and jumping up and down, uh, I realized, you know what, this is not smart because you have to preach tomorrow, Marcel. And so I tried very hard, Gary. I tried really hard not to speak anymore, but the game was too much for me not to say anything. And so I don't know if my voice is going to make it today. And so we might need Max to come up and finish my sermon uh, if it works out. Oh, look at him. He's already waiting to go. He's like, I wish you would just step to the side so I could preach. And so hopefully this goes well. If not, then the Lord didn't want me to say some things. Amen. And so uh, thank you for being patient and thank you already for your internal prayers. I know we have some kids here with us. The word of the day is some form of adopt, adoption, adopted. And so that is the word of the day. Go ahead and tally that. This month and next, uh, we will be talking about what it means to belong to God. And so we started off last week talking about and, and seeing in the scriptures that we belong to God because God created us. He created every single one of us. And so we want to now continue with this thought and understand some more depth of what it means to belong to God. And so we're going to thoroughly kind of walk through this and understand some of the ramifications of what it means to belong to God. So some things throughout the weeks will be said a little bit, but then the next week we will expand on it some more. Church, are you with me here? And so we're trying to dive deeper into these concepts and ideas. And so today we're going to be looking at, okay, well, if God created us, then what did he create us for? So let's go ahead and let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are a God who is almighty. That you're a God who is worth living for, dying for, preaching your good news. And God, we're grateful that we have this opportunity in Christ to call you Father. And God, I pray right now. God, I know how excited I am about the, the uh, material that, that we'll be covering today. God, I pray that you communicate your message. May you be the focal point May the glory be yours. May our attention turn to you. And God, again, may you work in our hearts to strengthen our faith, our relationship with you, our relationship with each other, our resolve to live a life worthy of the calling we have received. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so the, uh, I want to have a question here. And so we belong to God because we are God's creation. But why did God create us? So go ahead, take two, two, uh, one minute or so with the people around you and answer that question. Okay, we know we belong to God because God created us, so then why did he create us? So go ahead, take a second, and then we'll have some people share some things that they shared in their group. And on the chat, or excuse me, online, you can go ahead and type in the chat as well to do that. So go ahead, we'll give you about two minutes. All right. Let's get a couple people to share. 
what were some of the things that maybe you or your or your uh, one of your partners shared as far as why God created us? Yes, I can't tell who that is. Is that Dorka? Is that you? Okay, go ahead. Okay, so Dorka said that God created us so that we could love Him, and so just like we have those of us who have kids, we 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 love them and we want them to love us in return. Okay, great, awesome. All right, others, where where did you go ahead and share? Yes. Okay, to create beings that will follow and, and obey his commands there. All right, and Craig is also a 49er fan, so I know you're fired up as well. Okay, cool, awesome. All right, let's go ahead. We got some on this side here. Let's get, uh, let's get some folks on this side here. What was something uh, that you shared or maybe your partner shared about why God created us? Yes, sir. Okay, so he was looking for, sounds like, relationship. Okay, awesome. All right, there you go. All right, any others? Anybody else want to share something that was not shared already there? All right, who's that in the back that can't tell? Nancy, go ahead, Nancy. Okay, to be a living testimony to others of our, of our trials, our overcoming, our victories. Okay, awesome. All right, so I believe all those things here, and so what we'll see from Scripture as we talk about belonging to God is that we belong for relationship. You see, we belong to God so that we can have a relationship with him. And so let's look over in Ephesians chapter 1. Brothers and sisters, are you with me this morning? All right, look at this. Boy, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm fired up. I mean, 49 has got me fired up, but I'm more fired up about, about this, this stuff that we're going to learn here today. It says here, and so Paul is a, a, a leader in the church at this time. He actually uh, was a man who was opposed to Christianity, and then Jesus revealed himself to him. He became a Christian, and he actually used to oppose Christians, tried to uh, imprison Christians, and even was a part of some death of Christians, but he becomes a Christian, then he becomes a leader in the Christian church, and then he actually dies for his Christian faith. That's pretty incredible, isn't it? And so he's writing this letter to the church in Ephesus, and we're going to take it up in verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. Let's stop right there. You know, this is, some, this is so rich that there's so many things that we can take out of this text. But again, as we look through this lens of belonging to God, there's some very encouraging and inspiring things here. And I don't know if it, you are, it caught your attention the way it did mine, but there were several words and phrases that stood out. And so let's look at some of these. The first one, he says, before the creation of the world, and he says also predestined. What does that reveal? That, okay, so as God was thinking of creating, remember we learned last week he created all creation, right? He created you and me, so what did he have in mind? This tells us. So before he created everything, he had something in mind. And so we're realizing that this is God's plan, this is God's motive, and his will for creation and mankind. So here's what he had. And then it says this. It says, for us to have adoption to sonship. Adoption and sonship, that sounds like, no, that doesn't sound, that is family, isn't it? Right? And so before the creation ever took place, God predestined, he's thinking his will is that he have some people who will become family. And then he goes on and it says, well, this happens through Jesus Christ. So it just didn't happen at creation, but it happens through his son, Jesus, and that we can see from there that all the blessings and relationship with God come through Jesus. And then as we continue and we look here, there's some things that stood out. It says, all this was in accordance with his will and pleasure. Again, 
What are we seeing? This was God's design. Hey, all right, here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm intending. Here's what I want to have happen. Here's the intent and the purpose of my creation. And so since the beginning of the world, God chose us in Christ for relationship with him and to live out his purpose in this world. Again, this is, this is incredible. And so as God was thinking, okay, you know what? Here, here let's, just go, let's make this point here again. Is that we belong to God so that we can have a relationship with him. You see, God is creator. He created us so that we could belong to him. And belonging to him means relationship with him. And so, yes, he created us to bear his image. Yes, he created us, as we saw in Genesis, to co-rule with over the rest of his creation. But his primary intent was so that mankind would have what? A relationship with him. That's even to what some of the things that we shared here, right? Even when Dorcas said, hey, we want God, just like us who are parents or those who want to be parents, we want to have kids and have a loving relationship. When we have love for and it's reciprocal, that means we have a deep, personal, intimate relationship. And so we belong to God for or so that we can have relationship with him. And what type of relationship does he have in mind? A father-child relationship. You know, many of us want to have kids or have kids so that we can carry on our name. And so I know me, that was something big. I was like, Karina, uh, we got to still keep trying for this boy because that whole last name isn't going to continue. You know what I'm saying? But that was just one of several reasons that I, that I wanted to have kids. But other one, the biggest one is for relationship. I didn't want to create them and just have them go off anywhere. I didn't want to create them and have somebody else take care of them. I wanted to have a relationship. And again, we are made in the image of God, and so God created us, and his intent in mind was so that you and I would have this family relationship with him. And guys, I'll just share. Again, I know you guys can see this 49ers thing is on my heart here, but man, last night was so cool for me. So here we are watching the 49er game, right? And, uh, and, 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 and two of my kids love the 49ers with me, and one, I don't know what happened to her, uh, but she likes her mama, and, and, and she's a Cowboys fan, so there's some bickering in the house. And so we beat them last week, and so it was a good time for half of the house, and the other half it wasn't. But we're all watching this game, and I'm literally jumping up and down, and the kids are fired up. They're like, yeah, and I'm looking around going, man, this is awesome, but why did I just yell? And it was just so cool. And so, again, it was just this family relationship. It was like, man, this is what I was thinking, that I would have some kids who would enjoy life with me. You guys get what I'm saying here? And so God created us from the beginning. And here's the cool thing. From the beginning, God established a plan that his creation would be parented. It wasn't a clockmaker who said, here we go. No, God's intention, he established, hey, here's the plan, is I'm going to parent my creation. I'm not just going to take care of it. I want to parent my creation. And so through Christ, we are made children of God, giving us both a new relationship and a new position. You see, our relationship through Christ with God is that now he is our father. So guess what that means? We now have the right and the title to the father's riches. Our new position grants us privileges associated with belonging to the father's family. For example, the royal family in England. Is that the proper term? I don't know if that's the proper term. Or British, whatever it is, right? And so this royal family, they've had some kids, you know, get born here, right? Those kids, guess what? They have titles already. Haven't done a thing. They have privileges already. They have rights, they have a title, they have a position. Why? Just because they were born in the royal family. So guess what? Spiritually, we have titles, rights, and privileges, and riches of the spiritual family because God is our father. And that's a whole lot better than the royal family. You guys get what I'm saying here? 
And it says here, it says that, uh, let's go back to this, this adoption to sonship. You know, the interesting thing about adoption is that it's a choice. I have three kids. I'm grateful, blessed to have three kids. But, you know, I didn't choose my kids. I chose to have kids, but I didn't choose my kids. I received what I received, and I'm very grateful, so don't take that the wrong way. But I didn't choose it, but when somebody adopts or is adopted, that is solely by what? Choice. I am choosing to take you into my family. I don't have to do this, but I'm choosing to adopt you and bring you into my family. And it says that God's plan is that he would have a people that he would choose to be a part of his spiritual family. You know, the Roman practice was, uh, was pretty crazy. And so, again, the, the, the time that the, the scriptures were written, Roman, Rome was the uh, uh, superpower of the time there. And so uh, the Roman practice for adoption was really, it was really weird. Uh, was well, weird for us, okay, as far as uh, us looking at it. And so you would have the, the, uh, um, the, the, the father by birth. He would go and they'd have this kind of like ceremony, if you will. And so he would go and he would sell his kid for adoption three times. So in this moment, he would sell it. He would sell his child, his, his son, and then he'd buy him back. He would sell his child, then he would buy him back. And then the third time he'd sell his child, he wouldn't buy him back. And so then the adopting father then would then take the child, and then the adoption was complete. And so adoption was very common in this time here, but adoption meant a new life and family and a new opportunity, which is really incredible because, you see, again at this time with fathers, they, in, Roman, in this Roman society, a father had absolute power over his children so long as he and they lived. I read this. This, this is really crazy. I want to read it so that, so that I don't butcher this. He could sell his child as a slave or even kill him. This guy named Dion Cassius tells us that the law of the Romans gives a father absolute authority over his son and that for the son's whole, uh, and, and that for the son's whole life. It, gave, it gives him authority. If he so chooses to imprison him, to scourge him, to make him work on his estate as a slave in fetters, even to kill him, that right still continues to exist even if the son is old enough to play an active part in political affairs, even if he has been judged worthy to occupy the magistrate's office, and even if he is held in honor by all men. And so during this time here, you, if you were a dad here, and some of us think we have some controlling parents, you wouldn't have wanted to live back in that time. Because they could have said, easy, hey, you know what, uh, let's kill them. Because they had full rights. And we're not talking about when they're 15. We're talking about when they're a grown man. And so you would have, when you were adopted during this time, it meant a new life and a new family and a new opportunity. The person who had been adopted, here's the, here's the great thing, had all the rights of a legitimate son in his new family and completely lost all his rights in his old family. So in the eyes of the law, he was a new person. So new was he that he even all the debts and obligations connected with his previous family were abolished if they had, as if they had never existed. So when you were adopted, it was a completely new person. You had now this new family. All the old stuff doesn't even seem like it existed before. So if you had past debt through your old family, like, guess what? It's canceled because now you're in this new family. And so you can imagine what it was like to be adopted into a family. And so from the perspective of the child, this was an, a pure act of grace and mercy because they had nothing to receive. They had did, they had did nothing to receive this new status given by the new family. And so again, it was by choice. They didn't earn this adoption, but yet they were adopted and now everything was new. And so in love and by grace, God chose and is adopting us as his spiritual children and giving us the same status and rights as his son Jesus. 
So all that old sin, all the, the stuff from past in your family tree, when you are now in Christ, when you belong to God as his children, all that is canceled and gone, and you are completely new. This is incredible. This is amazing. It's a new life, and our debt of sin is canceled. And again, just like the Roman sons, by, the Bible reveals what God has done for you and me, for all of those who have been called to be his children. You see, we were absolutely in the power of sin. Just like those Roman sons were, they were completely controlled by their fathers. They didn't, they didn't have a say. They couldn't do much. We were completely controlled by our sin. However, God, through Jesus, took us out of that power into his. And that adoption wipes out the past and makes us new. If that doesn't make you praise God, I don't know what will. And this is so incredible, and it should have an effect and an impact upon our lives. I know for me, it builds my faith. Wow, God, you are amazing. It reassures us of our standing with God. Some of us be like, oh, I don't know how God feels about me. When you understand that you are being adopted into his family, you don't have to wonder how he feels about you. Because he's chosen you, canceling out all the debt of sin and past and making you new in his family. You know, again, this should lead us to a life and a heart full of gratitude. Why? Because we didn't earn this, but we were chosen and given mercy and forgiveness but not only that but then he puts us on this pedestal where somehow some way we have the same inheritance as Jesus does did y'all hear that if you're a child of God the scriptures reveal that you are a co-heir with Christ and have the same inheritance as Christ what so not only do you have something new, but you have, again, the status, the riches, and the titles of what it means to be in God's family. This should inspire us to worship him. Not only in song on Sunday, but this should inspire us to worship him in our own private times. This should inspire us to worship him with our lives. You know what, God, you are so incredible. I just want to give my very best to you. I can't help but live for you. And yes, I'm going to persevere when those trials, and yes, I'm going to fight when it's tough, but God, I've been adopted, and I'm being adopted into your family. Hallelujah. This should inspire those of us to seek a relationship with him for the first time. And for many of us, should inspire to seek a deeper relationship with him. You know, there's something interesting I want to point out is that as you can see in Ephesians 1, they have a lot of times here where it says us. Again, who is the, the us that he's referring to? Who is he referring to? To the church that he's writing to, right? He's like, hey, us, all of us, all, all of us who are followers of Jesus. Here's the thing. All these rich spiritual blessings that we refer to, this title, this new life, this new creation, it only applies if you have become a child of God. So here's the thing. There is a difference between being part of God's creation and being, part of, or, and being God's children. I'm going to say that again. There's a difference between God's being God's creation and being God's children. You see, we're all created by God, therefore we all belong to God. But there's a point in which we go from being creation to being child of God. And at that point, that's when we have all the blessings, status change, and adoption in Christ. So if you're not a follower of Jesus then that means you're not being adopted and don't have the rights of God's children. What I would say to you, if that applies to you, whether you're on screen or in this room, 
is that if you're not a follower of Jesus, if you never crossed over from being just his creation to now being his child, I want to encourage you that this is one of the most compelling reasons to make that choice. Is that you can go from just being created by him to now being his beloved child and having this spiritual, eternal, familial relationship with him and the rest of his children. You see, God created you to belong to him and to become a child of his. Again, what does it say? From the beginning of creation. So God, when he's creating, goes, I want all these people to cross over and go from creation to children. So that's why God created you, so that you could cross over and be his child. And let me just testify, there's no greater dad to have. Now, his family can be a little crazy at times, but, it, but the father is perfect, and he's worth making that step of faith. And if you are a child of God, then we should be impassioned and feverish to help people go from creation to child. This should impassion us. We should be, have a whole different view of the world and go, wow, I am so blessed to be a child of God, but the people I'm around don't know what's in store for them. They don't realize what's available and even what their purpose is. And so we shouldn't look by and go, that's just up to them. We should be impassioned and again feverish to go, I have to share this with them. I need to share this good news with, yes, my, my neighbor, with my, my classmates. I need to go ahead with the server at the restaurant that I'm eating at. I need to give them an opportunity to know that they can be not only just a creation of God, but they can be a beloved child of God. Church, are you with me here? You see, God redeemed you to his family, and he wants to redeem that classmate of yours, that coworker, your parents, your sibling, your friends. He wants to do for them what he's done in your life. You know, I was so encouraged. We were, we were, we were with the barbers and the, uh, and the winds the other day on Thursday, and we're talking about our marriages and, and things that we want to grow in. And, and Twan and Koki, they, they shared, hey, you know, one of the things that we, we really want to do, we have a desire, is just to be more evangelistic as a couple. And, uh, and Kenny asked them, well, hey, what, what, why, why do you want to do that? Like, what are the benefits? And they start, you know, rattling off all the benefits of being able to share the good news. It was encouraging. It was like, okay, we got to stop you right now for the sake of time. And it was so inspiring to be like, yes, there are so many benefits for those, but also even my relationship with God. When I'm being used for his purposes to help people go from creation to child. And I pray again that if you are a child of God, that you are starting to develop or maybe it starts to redevelop an unyielding conviction, an unwavering belief, and an ever-growing passion to share the good news so that people can see that they have a God who has called them to be his son or daughter. I want us to go ahead and do this here for a couple of minutes. We probably won't be able to get to all the questions here. But I want us to go ahead and, 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 and with the people around us, have some discussion here. And then I'll come back up and close us out. What is one thing the Spirit brought to your attention today? So what is that one thing? And how do you think God wants you to respond to that that he brought to your attention? And then if you can here, how can, you tru how can truly understanding that you belong to God for relationship have an effect on your faith, your attitude, your relationships, and even your daily choices? And then lastly, what is one action step you will take this week? I'm going to give you guys a number of minutes here, so I'm going to leave this on the screen here. And again, those online, go ahead and uh, have conversation through the chat there. I'll be back in a few minutes. Eric, can you get some music playing again? Thank you. Let's get, let's get maybe get one or two hands here. Maybe, maybe share. You can answer any one of these questions here. Um, so, yeah, let's get, let's get a couple people to share. You can choose which one uh, you want to, to answer. We don't want you to answer all three. Uh, so so let, let's get a couple of hands. Who, who, who wants to go ahead and share? Now we're getting all shy here. Okay, all right. All right, Chris, go ahead. What stood out to him uh, was this idea of adoption, and it's a choice. And so God chose, and so he responds wanting to grow in his love and relationship with and reflect upon that relationship. Awesome. All right, let's get, let's get one or two more. Go ahead and share. Who's that, Jessica? 
Great, thank you. So this, this visual for her of going from creation to child and uh, how helpful that was, not only for herself, uh, but also in, in being able to share that with others there. Okay, great, thank you so much. All right, let's get one more here. Let me go ahead and share one more. Go ahead, Kenny. So the idea, again, of belonging to God for a relationship uh, um, makes you want to explore and deepen that relationship, right? Explore it more. Explore it more. And, oh, and giving confidence. That was huge. All right. It gives confidence and it inspires to want to explore the relationship more. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. So as we come to a, a close here for our time, well, let's remember, again, we're, 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 we, we started off, we belong to God because he created us. And then we belong to God so that we can have a relationship with him. And so again, we close out here in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 5. It says, in love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. Brothers and sisters, I pray that we will rejoice and live in the fact that we belong for a relationship with our creator. Amen.